Good evening, everyone. Hello, Dr. Vishwash. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, sure. Can you see the screen? Right, right. Okay. Welcome you all to the last day of the webinar. And uh, I'll request each participant to keep their uh, microphone mute as well as uh, their video uh, on mute. Uh, I now request uh, Shondipan to take over. Hello, Shondipan. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you, Suchishmita Di. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's the third day of our international webinar series on the role of biotechnology in the COVID-19 pandemic issues and challenges. So today on the third day of this uh, webinar series, we have uh, three presentation. So the first topic of presentation is pressing the origin, facing the challenges. And this presentation is uh, going to be delivered by Dr. Obhik Vishash. So let me first introduce uh, Dr. Vishas. He is presently associated as Senior Research Officer at Chitaranjan National Cancer Institute, Calcutta. After completing his PhD in Biotechnology from University of Calcutta in 2013, Dr. Vishas joined Tulane University, Louisiana, USA as a postdoctoral fellow and then spent three more years as Research Associate at the Scripps Research Institute, Florida, USA before joining his current affiliation. His research interests focus on investigating the complex role of protein-protein and protein-RNA interactions during viral as well as non-viral cancer development. Thank you, Dr. Vishash, for accepting our invitation to deliver the talk in this webinar series. Now over to you, Dr. Vishash. Well, uh, thank you for the nice invite, uh, for, for the nice introduction and inviting me uh, to deliver to this talk. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the, some of the challenges that the novel coronavirus uh, is throwing towards us, and I will try uh, to look deep in into the thank origin you. of the virus. So, the title of uh, today's talk is COVID-19: Tracing uh, the Origin, Facing the Challenges. Now, as a brief introduction. Human coronaviruses uh, was first identified in the mid 1960s. I think the first report came out in Nature in the year 1968, and uh, the coronaviruses are named uh, for their crown-like appearance in electron micrograph. There are like four main subgroups of coronaviruses, known as alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. And overall, so far, seven coronaviruses are discovered that uh, can infect people for uh, there are like four uh, coronaviruses that causes mild in, uh, infections or mild symptoms uh, starting with uh, 229e nl63 both uh, uh, belongs to alpha coronavirus group and oc43 and hku1 both belongs to beta corona group now for the hku1 the existence of that particular virus is still uh, controversial because uh, uh, the COG postulate for this particular virus is still incomplete as no infectious system still exists for this particular virus, HQ1. And when the phylodynamics are performed, are considering uh, a different genetic region of the virus, then the phylogenetic findings are really inconsistent. So there are controversy over the existence of that particular virus. Now the other three human coronaviruses that causes uh, serious uh, uh, human infections with serious clinical manifestations are SARS coronavirus, that is the coronavirus one that uh, caused the outbreak in 2003. Then MERS coronavirus, that caused the outbreak in 2012 and the SARS coronavirus 2 or the novel coronavirus that started the pandemic lately 2019 from December. So uh, to start uh, uh, addressing the COVID-19 challenge, I'm going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages uh, of the virus in the form of strengths and weakness of the virus. So to start with addressing the challenges, the First, or the most vital question that comes in our mind is that how smart is coronavirus 2 or COVID-19 virus? So uh, the thing is that the virus enjoys very high transmission potential that makes the virus 
uh, contagious like anything. So what happens is that uh, the virus just sitting with that particular advantage managed to create a pandemic that now affecting the almost the, all the nations of the entire uh, globe. So that's the primary strategy that the virus relies on. But apart from this particular strategy, I have to say that the virus is actually really inefficient or I have to say the virus is stupid because the virus doesn't really know how to stay within the same host anything more than a couple of weeks. Now imagine the likes of a uh, human immune deficiency virus, such as HIV, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, human papilloma virus. They have mastered the art of staying within the same host for decades. So they exactly know how to dribble and dodge the assaults of human immune system and then to deal the challenges of modern science in the form of uh, uh, like uh, in the form of uh, antivirals, direct acting antivirals, uh, uh, immune modulated drugs. So they know how to deal with those assaults. So those viruses are masters when it comes down to stay with the same host. But what this virus does, this virus just like to jump from one host to another before the emergence of the immune system. So this virus hardly knows the art of hiding. That's a big plus. And if we see uh, what it means, uh, this virus escapes before the emergence of the immune system. Again, what part of the immune system? The adaptive branches. So what happens when there are the uh, antibody responses starts to emerge, this virus gets eliminated. So there is a strong indication there are antibody or uh, a cocktail of antibody population that are really effective against this particular virus. So that a very soft area of the virus that we can really make a comment here that in just a matter of time, the scientist will come up with uh, the correct antibody and start scientists will identify the correct targets or the epitox for those antibodies. Then we have a real vaccine candidate. And at the same time, we have really promising passive Immunize, immunization biologics in our hand. So these are the areas that the virus are, is like really stupid. And then to continue with the same topic, the virus has a very huge genetic material. The RNA is almost 30 uh, kilobases long. And that requires the polymers to be absolutely perfect. At the same time, the fidelity needs to be at the top level. So what happens whenever there is the viral replication is going on and there are misincorporations, what happens the, uh, for every misincorporation or mutations, the virus uh, has to pay a very high selection cost. Or in other words, the virus mutates itself out of the business. So what happens, the virus is actually slowly evolving and the viral heterogeneous population or quasi-species is, uh, I would say, very weak in the same host. And the, if, even if there is a very quasi-species at a very low level, they are not uh, selected. They, uh, uh, the virus itself doesn't know whether uh, the new variant in, is immune selected or not. So the virus doesn't know. So what most important here is that uh, uh, by the virologist now uh, my, have, the, so the bottom line is that science has this in hand so uh, it, this itself is a very good news now uh, uh, if we uh, despite all this uh, weakness of uh, sars coronavirus 2 uh, best on its a contagious uh, character and high transmission potential uh, what the virus managed to uh, achieve is a global pandemic and the magnitude of uh, the pandemic is really high this is the snapshot of uh, the who dashboard uh, of today's morning so we can see the number of cases is uh, touching almost 7.5 million and the death troll is heading towards half a million. So uh, uh, 
uh, that directly indicates the magnitude of the problem. Now, the obvious question that uh, comes in our mind is that when and where it started. So, uh, if we see the first report of the novel coronavirus outbreak uh, uh, was at Wuhan in mid-December last year. And the geographical location of Wuhan is absolutely important because it's in very close proximity with the southern uh, Guantan district of China, where, like almost two decades back, the first SARS-1 outbreak happened. So we can easily speculate that this particular geographical pocket is a uh, hotspot or a uh, natural reservoir for coronaviruses, either human coronaviruses or similar coronaviruses. Now, uh, following the outbreak, the Wuhan uh, Virology Institute immediately characterized the virus and uh, mm, uh, some of the characterization uh, done uh, uh, that suggests that doubling time varies in between two to seven days. The case fatality rate among the symptomatic uh, uh, infected people is somewhere around two to three percent and the overall infection fatality rate is somewhere around 15 percent and among the case uh, cases with symptoms the severe cases is somewhere around 15 percent uh, i don't want to uh, you know talk too much about the uh, clinical perspective because yesterday dr singh just uh, explained all these things uh, 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 very elaborately so uh, now moving to the next uh, slide, uh, another detection of first happened at Hunan market, Hunan animal market, where 27 workers uh, fall sick and uh, uh, following sample collection from them and characterization of the virus revealed that uh, this is a novel coronavirus. But at the same time, this particular uh, geographical location raised uh, a big controversy uh, the, and probably the conspiracy theory. So the countries of far west or the Western world immediately started blaming China that this is a Chinese virus or a purposefully manipulated virus. Uh, China purposefully made the virus to use it as a bioweapon. Obviously, on the other hand, China uh, uh, reject, uh, still re rejected the claims and still rejecting it because what we witnessed, the social media, newspaper, news channels, everything got flooded with uh, these claims, reclaims, uh, and then blames, denial. So uh, I found it absolutely tantalizing to represent uh, uh, the hypothesis of uh, SARS uh, coronavirus 2, that is natural evolution versus genetically modified virus. So uh, uh, if we see at the genome uh, of the virus, this is a typical coronavirus where the first two thirds of the genome codes for some of the non-structural elements. Now non-structural proteins for this kind of viruses uh, are absolutely yeah, vital. The non-structural proteins are absolutely vital because they, uh, 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 create the uh, viral replicas assembly and that drives the uh, uh, viral replication. Whereas the structural proteins here in the later part of the genome codes for some of the structural element that makes the viral structure. So, and then there, uh, there are proteins like the spike protein, envelope protein, uh, the membrane protein, the nucleocapsid protein, all comes under the structural elements. Now, for any viruses to track down uh, their origin, the uh, viral uh, genome itself is the key to this process. So decoding the genetic signature tells a lot about the origin of the virus. So there are two notable features of the sars cov genome. One is the sars cov spike protein that appears to be optimized for binding to the human receptor ACE2. And the other notable feature is the uh, uh, functional polybasic furin cleavage site right at the junction of the S1, S2 boundary of the spike protein through the insertion of 12 nucleotides or four, uh, or, or four amino acids. Here we can see these are the sites of the olein glycans, that is site for glycosylation. And this furin cleavage site is absolutely specific for SARS coronavirus 2. This site is not there in any other coronaviruses. So these are the two notable features. And let's see what these uh, features tells us. 
So mutations in the receptor binding domain of SARS coronavirus 2. So there are six uh, uh, amino acids in the receptor binding domain that shown to be absolutely critical for binding to ACE2 receptor. Now, here, the amino acid alignment clearly shows that other than the last two amino acids, that is tyrosine 491 and 505, the rest of the five amino acids are mutated. So the computational analysis predict, oh shit, okay. So the computational analysis predict that the insertion is not ideal, but uh, what happens is that uh, the biochemical analysis uh, suggests that, uh, uh, that the sars cov 2 may bind the human ACE2 with high affinity. Now, if we consider that this is a purposefully manipulated virus, what happens is that uh, 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 then no biologist would have ever uh, uh, go for a uh, substitution that is not ideal, at least by means of in silico search, right? So that is a strong evidence that SARS coronavirus 2 is not the product of purposeful manipulation. Now, oh, I don't know. Some scratch marks are coming uh, on the screen. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Please bear with. So at this, uh, uh, the second notable feature is the uh, polybasic cleavage site. Now uh, the polybasic cleavage site, oligoglycans can also argue against the cell culture based scenario as the uh, uh, cell culture or animal passage would have recurred prior isolation of a progenitor virus or a homologous virus, that's impossible or improbable. And the cell culture platform is highly unlikely because uh, such feature demands the involvement of complete immune system, which is absent in cell culture because in cell culture, the adaptive branches of the immune system is totally absent. Now, uh, now it is, Okay, it is improbable that SARS coronavirus to emerge through laboratory manipulation of related SARS coronavirus like coronaviruses because if genetic manipulation have been performed, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, excuse me, if any genetic ma manipulation have been performed, then one of the several reverse genetic systems available for beta coronaviruses would probably have been used. That's not there because uh, Remember, the SARS uh, coronavirus 2 or the SARS coronavirus genome is extremely big, like 30 kilobases long. And it's very difficult to clone such a big sequence in any mammalian expression cassette. So what the SARS coronavirus virologist does is that they clone the sequence in bacterial artificial chromosomes, like p bello back 20 or p back sars of full length, et cetera. So what happens for all of this is bacterial expression system, right at the five prime mutator, there is CMV promoter. And right at the end, at the three prime mutator, there is BGH chain. So any sequence of those five prime and, and three prime mutator are not there in the virus. And the structural elements of the virus are well restored. So we know that uh, for coronavirus, subgenomic replicon exists. So what happens for any viruses, I have uh, uh, like first-hand experience with that. Uh, for any viruses, what happens is that when uh, the virus is cultured uh, in uh, in vitro system for passages of the pathogen, then the viral replication goes up. But the viral replication goes up at the expense of structural elements. So the structural elements keep on deleting. And that concept or observation actually lay, uh, led the foundation of subgenomic replicon for RNA viruses. So we can see that the structural elements are well restored. And at the same time, the virus contains native five prime and three prime mutator. Right at the very end even, there's absolutely no signs of any other sequence as part of the promoter or the virus, which is a part in turn 
of the viral cassette. So that collectively strongly indicates towards the natural origin of SARS coronavirus too. Now uh, uh, that we know that we have ample uh, evidence based on genetic dissection of the viral uh, genome that uh, the virus originated uh, naturally. So what are the uh, possible uh, scenarios uh, that the viral opted for its natural evolution? So uh, number one is natural selection in an animal host before zoonotic transfer. What happens there? The virus gains adaptive mutations. Virus need to get adapted to a different host to survive and propagate within the new host, right? So what happens for in that particular theory, tentatively either bat coronavirus or pangolin coronavirus are the likely ancestor of SARS coronavirus. And somehow the pangolin or the bat coronavirus gained adaptive mutation and then the spill out happened. And the other uh, possible theory is that natural selection in humans following zoonotic transfer, where the adaptive, and the additive mutation happened following transfer. So the progenitor sars cov virus 2 probably jumped into humans and then gained some adaptation and some additive mutations. And then suddenly the pandemic took off uh, and the surveillance system detected it. So these are the two possible scenarios that uh, can explain the natural origin of the virus. Or the third possibility is the combination of both these possibilities, like uh, uh, natural, uh, half of the adaptation happened in the reservoir host, jumped to humans, and then gained full adaptation and the additive mutation. And then the virus uh, gain the property of such a huge transmission potential. That is the virus became extremely contagious. So these are two possibilities and that's the third one. So uh, now that we are talking about the positive selection, a nice paper came out uh, uh, just uh, early this month. Uh, so in that particular paper, the authors compared 40 full length sars cov 2 genome and 147 full length bat coronavirus RIT G13 genome. And upon alignment, they identified there are 147 amino acid replacements. And out of which total polymorphic or, or, or non cinema sites are only 41. And all these 41 sites are all over the protein or, or ORF or all over the di, 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 different uh, proteins. And gamma map analysis clearly suggests that positive selection was detected for seven sites, including six in the S1 region of the spike protein and one in N protein. Now, if the cutoff or the rigidity of the gamma map analysis is lowered a little bit, then immediately almost 35 sites out of those 41 polymorphic or non synonymous sites becomes uh, uh, positively selected. So that explains that during natural selection, a bunch of sites underwent positive selection and the virus emerged. And analysis of viral cluster clearly indicates that here the pink color indicates the bat coronavirus cluster and the very nearby is, uh, is the human coronavirus and bat coronavirus is indicated with green color. And immediately the other clade is, the nearest clade is for pangolin coronavirus for whole genome and for the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, that is the, poly the polymerase uh, uh, genome, is the same story. But when we analyze the amino acid sequence of the receptor binding domain of S protein and S phylogeny, the gray box indicates the receptor binding domain. We can see the pangolin uh, coronavirus way more closer to the human SARS-2 virus and only one uh, substitution or mutation is there. But for that coronavirus, there are a bunch of mutations. And the orange color indicates the key amino acid residue involved in the interaction with human SAE2. And we can see those key residues are absolutely conserved among the pangolin coronavirus and uh, human coronavirus. So that directly indicates that there is an intermediate host and probably 
pangolin is the best candidate for this one. And here, uh, 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 this is the cartoon of uh, the phylogenetic analysis, where a consensus phylogenetic trees are uh, constructed. When the phylogenetic tree is constructed, considering the whole genomes, then we can see that the bat coronavirus and the human coronavirus too, uh, uh, comes under a single cluster and pangolin is situated in a different clade. But when the 5-key amino acid for ACE2 in the receptor binding domain is considered from the ACE1 subunit of the spike protein, then the human uh, coronavirus 2 and the pangolin coronavirus comes under a single cluster, just uh, outgrouping the uh, uh, bat coronavirus in a different clade. And when the potential fearing recognition motif is considered, we can see that then uh, the bat coronavirus and pangolin coronavirus comes under a single uh, cluster, outgrouping the uh, human coronavirus SARS-2. So uh, findings are interesting, but definitely pangolin is sitting somewhere there as intermediate host. But uh, we really need to study. We means uh, the virologist working with uh, the coronavirus uh, by genetics. Uh, they need some more time before they could say uh, something about uh, where pangolin sits in concrete. So, um, uh, as a summary of uh, the origin of viruses about SARS coronavirus 2, irrespective of the exact mechanisms, clearly SARS coronavirus 2 research groups working on SARS coronavirus 2 genetics, specifically uh, working on the origin of the virus. And I would like to thank all the audience here and I welcome any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bishash. Uh, now, the session is open for questioning. Participants, if you have any question, please put it on the chat box. We will put the questions to Dr. Bishash. If you have any question, you can put in the chat box. Okay, one question is there. Uh, mm -hmm. Does does COVID two creates the same symptoms in pangolins? Well, uh, uh, as I told, uh, we don't know where SARS coronavirus two. Uh, obviously, pangolin is sitting somewhere there, but uh, uh, whether SARS coronavirus two infects to its reservoir host or intermediate reservoir with the same efficiency, right? So. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think uh, any such reports are there like that. So um, I don't know uh, right now. Yeah, but it's a very good question. Yeah, because we really need to track down what happened to the animal reservoirs. We really need to tag, track down. But uh, yeah, let's see what comes up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to put your question here? Okay, one question is there. What is the role of geographical isolation in evolution of SARS-CoV-2? Well, uh, if, we, uh, if we see the long history of any infectious diseases, for any infectious pathogen, uh, for some reason, uh, they prefer a particular geographical location as their natural reservoir. Probably the environment and the host genetic background for that particular geographical location gives them a selective advantage. So uh, that's probably what's happening here with SARS coronavirus or the coronavirus because this particular virus uh, quite clearly likes the Southeast uh, China as its natural geographical reservoir. Okay, another question is from Dr. Shourab Shom, is there any chance of reverse genosis? Well, uh, yes, uh, because there are certain sporadic reports that uh, the virus is uh, spreading from humans to some animals. So uh, 
yes, there are chances there, are, uh, um, and I have to say the chances are quite high, but uh, uh, we still have to wait for scientifically acceptable reports. Okay, another question is from Dr. Vishrupa Ghosh. Which software was used for studying the virus genomes in this study? Okay, uh, so there are multiples of software that are used. So, uh, uh, as I told, uh, for uh, positive selection, that's uh, uh, the gamma map analysis software for aligning the sequences. In generally, the um, that's very simple classical program. For any software like uh, uh, personally, I use like. BioEdit because that's free. Then there are DNA star, laser gene, bunch of softwares that we can use uh, to construct uh, a phylogeny. And, uh, and the other thing that I would like to say, it's uh, very difficult to track down uh, the uh, original uh, time of the origin of the virus because there are so much like indel sites in the virus. So uh, for any molecular clocking analysis, uh, uh, the software don't accept any indel sites. So those analyses uh, can't be done at this point with the available softwares. Okay. Uh, next question is from Urmi Mitro. Is mm -hmm. there any probability that like pangolin, some animal can act as reservoir host of this virus in India? Okay. Uh, 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 not only in India, everywhere. And that's the biggest of nightmare because suppose uh, the virus mm, just uh, keeps on infecting people and uh, after a certain time, uh, there is a hard immunity that comes into the picture. Now the virus will look for secondary host when it will find very difficult to survive, right? And then, it will go to an alternative host there. It will like to change itself. And then again, it will try to revert back to humans with its new uh, uh, gesture or new, uh, you know, armors, I would say. So that's the biggest of nightmare, you know. So uh, this is the time not to keep distant or uh, from humans only, from uh, all possible animals also. Okay. Even Next question yeah. is, okay, okay. Next question is from Professor Rupa Mondol. If there are any receptor homology with mm -hmm. ACE2 in mm -hmm. any other animal, mm -hmm. will the other animals be infected by COVID-2? Probably yes. Probably yes. Yeah. Okay. Next question uh, is uh, from Koilash Chandra Semwal. Uh, SARS CoV-2 change its antigenic structure like H1N1? Is it? Well, uh, 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 during that webinar series, there are people who uh, uh, talked about the uh, molecular architecture of the protein. I was trying to see how this protein might behave structurally. Uh, so uh, uh, let me tell you one thing. For the ACE2 receptor on the spike protein, that is the ACE1 fragment, they uh, already the, uh, um, there are signs of two different confirmations. There are like one is like open confirmation and the other is closed confirmation. So the viral receptor is uh, 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 sorry, the viral uh, uh, receptor binding domain is already showing signs of plasticity. So uh, yes, there are ample possibilities of uh, such uh, um, okay, you know, uh, speculation. Yeah. Okay, another interesting question is, what do you think about mink as an reservoir host? Mink as an, what do you think about mink as an reservoir host? Recently, it is reported from Dutch government. Uh, I would love to see such reports coming uh, uh, in uh, scientific papers because to accept a report scientifically, to convince a scientific report, uh, 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 to sci convince a scientific audience, uh, I think uh, uh, I would like to see it coming uh, through uh, uh, official scientific forum. Yeah, probably the scientific papers. Another question from Dr. Priyanko uh, Dhar, which is uh, 
just a minute. What are the possibilities of transmission of SARS-CoV-2 from human to other animals? Well, uh, as I already told, that's uh, pretty high. Whenever there is, uh, you know, uh, ACE2 receptor or likely receptors are there for any other animal, there are ample probability that uh, uh, there will be transmission. Okay. Another question from Jinia Roy. Cat can be affected through COVID-19? Uh, I was uh, uh, going through a similar report in newspaper, but um, there are possibilities because it, look, it's too early. Six months of time is just not enough, you know, uh, uh, to uh, uh, classify uh, a virus. At least uh, from the viewpoint of its transmission, it needs time, and it's very difficult with uh, such a virus that. Uh, uh, changes with time, right? Because the virus is always changing. So it's, it's difficult, but it's a good question. Yeah. Okay, another question from uh, Mr. Mohendra Divedi. He has asked that whether coronavirus remain in recovered patients, but the virus will remain in recovered patients. Well, uh, that's to be very honest, unlikely with the present scenario. If SARS, coronavirus 2 uh, has to infect someone who recovered coronavirus 2, then the virus has to undergo extensive changes. And probably no longer coronavirus 2 will be coronavirus 2 anymore, it will be coronavirus 3. Okay. Another question is from uh, Devastri Goldar. Is there any possibility that the S1 and S2, both active domains of spike proteins of SARS-CoV-2, can be mutated to make it non-functional? Can I repeat or? Uh, yeah, I got to uh, uh, look. In generally, the thing is that there are certain mutations that will happen. And as I already told, uh, for 99% cases, the mutants are actually a uh, 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 detriment to the virus or the fancy word is catastrophic for the virus itself. So the thing is that uh, I don't think uh, any such possibilities because transmission will only happen when the receptor binding domain is fully functional, right? So. Uh, it doesn't matter. There are varieties that are always coming up with truncated uh, uh, receptor binding domain, but I'd say that those viruses are null, functionally null, because they no longer uh, have the uh, capabilities to spread the infection. Okay, last question for you, Dr. Vishas. Mm -hmm. Why are some human these days asymptomatic for several days, even if they are infected? Is it related to any mutations? I think it's because of the uh, uh, immune background of the host. Because okay. uh, uh, if uh, someone is, uh, 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 if someone's immunity is very strong, then the immunity starts challenging the virus, and that's where the damage starts to happen within the system. Damage starts to happen within the system, and then the patients start to show the symptoms. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Vishas, for such a nice presentation once again. And we are really fortunate okay. to get you in this, uh, a part in this webinar, actually. Thank you. Thanks again. So our next speaker is, uh, in this evening, is Dr. Firdausi Begum. Uh, she is going to deliver a talk on COVID-19 fact, Bangladesh healthcare system. So let me first introduce Dr. Firdosi Begum. She is the Founder Executive Director of Development of Biotechnology and Environmental Conservation Center since 1998. It is, uh, this, this, this organization is from Bangladesh actually. So this is a registered NGO which is committed in poverty alleviation and environmentally sustainable social and economic development in Bangladesh. She completed her PhD in genetic engineering from Bosch Institute, Calcutta. After that, she joined Bangladesh Atomic Energy Commission as senior scientific officer in 1995, but left the job to join as senior lecturer in the Department of Science and Technology, Bangladesh Open University. In 1997, she left this job also and established this 
organization with which she is currently associated. She is also involved with the space cultural activities with farmers, an established farmers society in Bangladesh. She is the winner of Bangla Academy Science Writer Award in the year 2005-06, which is the one of the highest national awards of Bangladesh. So thank you, ma'am. Uh, okay, you can now, now uh, okay. deliver your presentation here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Papia Chakraborty. She is my batchmate of PhD um, time in Bursa District PMCG Laboratory. I am very proud of him, her, that she arranged uh, this type of seminar and involved me. Though I am not a virologist, I am not a. I am now a social scientist. I have lab laboratory. What I am doing because of uh, lacking of scope in research in Bangladesh, I am now, uh, you know, doing the. Uh, I am now doing the tissue culture type of work and working with the, you know, seed production and work with the farmers. Actually, the empowerment of the farmers with the good productions, and I became a mostly just science communicator and also the socio scientist like this because of you know the uh, hard science is not you know possible hard science work uh, is not possible doing in bangladesh as a lot of you know the we have not just that type of you know research grants and many obstacles that's why i'm leaving two government jobs which is very challenging for me when i started my own journey into software biotechnology. Software biotechnology. So I'm talking today, I have heard last three days, two days, and now also the hardcore virology. Um, uh, you know, I'm not a virologist, and molecular things, uh, molecular biology of virolo vi virologists. Many virologists are very renowned virologists of the orange. This is so much and reach me, which I really uh, don't know, even know last uh, six months. Actually, I heard this COVID-19 when I was in Malaysia on January. Uh, I went to Malaysia on 14th January for my uh, meeting purpose. Then from there, I went to Singapore. Then it was New Year's Day of Chinese. I stopped going to China. Then I had there is a reason for that, and then I came I, uh, from Singapore to I um, uh, switched to because Singapore to I went to Thailand, and then I found there is a serious um, you know the about uh, the Thailand people are very much aware about this, and they are that time they are you know uh, they are distributing sanitizer. And also in the all market and shopping center and in different hospitals, the you know, sanitizer and mask and reward the people. Then I came back on 30th January and I told the people here, the, you, know, you know, in different um, uh, media, I also presented uh, in, um, a talk show in the media and I told about this virus. And I started my work to ever the people about this. So, uh, in this respect, I just want to say that about our health system in Bangladesh that, uh, and our research system in Bangladesh, it is uh, not the hard science, it is, uh, you know, uh, the, the, just the situation, what is going, what is with us now and what is going and what to be done. So, this is my... Uh, presentation uh, all about next slide. Okay. So our Bangladesh Constitution, you know, the uh, five they have a five five pillar. One is food, clothing, shelter, education, shelter, education, shelter, education, health, healthcare. So. Bangladesh is now called a food spirit country, and uh, clothing is also uh, not a problem at all. Shelter is a little bit problem. 
education is we achieve the MDG goal, but in healthcare system, this time, in COVID's time, we are we just knew that we are not in a good position. We are we are totally in a risky position in the healthcare system. Though we achieve the uh, we have some achievements that that we have uh, achieved 100 percent vaccination of our young generation last 47 years after independence you know, you know our independence 1971 we achieved that goals that 100 percent vaccination all the people which we are now uh, try, try to say that we have the uh, we can survive at the high hard immunity uh, we, but uh, you know, young people is have that have have that hard immunity, and our child mortality rate is about ninety five percent. We achieved that also. It is very good indication of our health system. Average life expectancy about seventy years to seventy five years. Community clinic in every union in our. In our you know, country we have a district, and then we have a sub district, and then we have union, and then village. So every union we have a community district. Though we have not that much of doctors, what we need. Bangladesh is also a medicine exporters country. We are exporting the medicine, and our medicine is very good in Bangladesh. Uh, is uh, is a uh, is already proved that. In case of medicine, pharmaceuticals, we are very good. And pre drinking water and sanitation is in every household of the rural total population. You can say, you can see any area of Bangladesh, we have that, except in the, you know, like, you know, the, any cyclone, Ampan, or this is the phase of Ampan, or CEDO, or any cyclone, or any devastation, we can. Uh, we already, you know, proved that our sanitation system and water drinking water system is very good. And now I am just uh, describing the lacking of healthcare system in Bangladesh. Lack of doctors regarding to our population size. You know how we are densely populated country. Um, it is a world highest densely populated country within a small area and it is agriculture based country so our industrialization is not much than only the government's industry we are the dependent so the now the the units of doctor is very less than the uh, you know the population size Qualified doctors are not, we have a lot of qualified doctors coming from abroad to, you know, with the highest degree, but they are not interested to move. Even the newly uh, appointed government doctor not uh, interested to go to the remote area to serve in a community healthcare, um, healthcare clinic. And it is a very, very much challenging for us. Government hospitals are not adequate for uh, complicated diseases, you know, treated the complicated diseases. You know, in our country, we have cancer hospital, we have uh, many, many types of uh, disease hospitals, but heart hospital, we have eye specialized hospital, everything. But this is not adequate for the, you know, the, the human, our, um, you know, the common people and doctors are not given adequate time for the patient, you know, the, because of overpopulation and less doctors and qualified doctors are always busy with the, with the small, um, you know, that lot of patient they have given the, the government doctors work 8 to 2 p.m. and then they do in private practice. And they are not given so much, and it is a very expensive uh, healthcare system in Bangladesh. Um, private hospitals are more adequate than government hospitals, more expensive, not reachable for the mass people. 
rich people, VIP, and our ministers, even President, Prime Minister go abroad, like Singapore, Thailand, UK, USA, for the simple treatment, even the, you know, the cold, fever, like this. And middle class people used to go to India for their various uh, diseases, especially Calcutta, Bangalore, uh, uh, Bombay, and Chennai. There are a lot of corruption in the healthcare system for doctors transfer, procurement of the instrument, and to const uh, procurement to construction of the medical college also. Lack of research in medical college, including private. We don't have any research system, any molecular biology. You know, even we don't we don't teach the molecular biology in our you know the doctors syllabus when we graduated our doctors. I used to teach four years in one medical college, molecular biology, but it is. Not that adequate because uh, only four years after that biochemistry object that the, the enough it is uh, 50 uh, marks course is enough for the molecular biology of for the doctor so we are lagging behind of this type of research and studies um, about the molecular I have I'm so I, I was graduated I I did my PhD in both institutes so I know the Indian arena that you, you are very quite uh, good in the research and the government provided research fund also. But uh, we have a lot of research institute in our country, but it is not based by the student. It is uh, our, our research institute is running by the uh, officers, not uh, registered by the student, like Bose Institute, ISA Bangalore, or any other institute like India. So, a student is not working there, only a student working in the university. In university, there is a lacking of microbiological researches. Uh, it is only theoretical basis, a uh, little bit in microbiological research. And uh, only this time, uh, one, one uh, our um, children hospitals, the two molecular biologists, and daughter and um, further sequences that COVID-19 is only case that it is not any university or anything. So, and our government ignored the total uh, the situation. Uh, it, I, now I am going to it is it, it, what I have explained. It is the situations present situations in Bangladesh. Now I am coming to COVID-19 and Bangladesh. What we are doing now. Our government ignored the total situation of Corona-19 till 20, uh, 24th March 2020. They, was, they have a lot of time when China, uh, when it was started in China, in Spain, Italy, France, but they are, I don't know why, we, we try to you know, be, um, uh, award the government to you know, preparedness because we have lot, three months at least we have the time to prepare about this corona situation. The first death was uh, 8 March. The first death was 8, 8 March. Uh, then the government uh, started with thinking and then social media and uh, um, social media active about the corona situation and in abroad in Bangladesh. When it was started at China, December, I already mentioned it, uh, don't take preparation. And political disagreement totally mesmerized our health security system at this time in COVID 19 situation. Uh, political leaders are not ready to accept this, you know, the COVID 19. They always said it is a gossip, it is a gossip, it is a gossip. And then two million immigrants entered the country during March, April to uh, uh, March to April without any quarantine and isolation, especially from Italy, France, Spain, Germany, and other European and Northern American countries. 
they spread all over the country. Government announced general holiday on 24th March or rather on our independent day, 26th March for 15 days. And still now our government doesn't agree and doesn't announce any lockdown. It is already in, always in, even in each vacation, each time it is told as a uh, you know general holiday. So people are going to the they again people uh, you know then again people leaving Dhaka is such even people went to uh, uh, with rush when the government is you know government says it is a holiday then people uh, are go, spreading all the countries and their hometown and also even in Cox's Bazaar for enjoying the holiday. In the meanwhile, Corona started their games in Bangladesh. Till now, still now, government does not announce any lockdown in general. Log localized lockdown and home lockdown happening in different situations. Though all educational institutes and uh, are closed from after 18th March till today. Situation of doctors and healthcare. No specialized provide hospital till April in our country. After a lot of pressure, three hospitals were announced for COVID treatment, but with any uh, COVID treatment support. All private hospitals denied to treat COVID patient or any type of patient. Government has no control over them. No readiness of doctor to treat COVID patient, no PPE, no training, no equipment. In an inadequate testing kit, PCR system, long waiting for result, doctor have, has denied to uh, join for treatment after a lot of pressure and humanitarian ground they join. At, uh, at least they joined last two months back. And already, because of our lack of preparation, already 36, um, the, uh, 36 doctors and many nurses already died, and 1065 doctors affectedly due to, due to my niece, the doctor, she, he or me also affected now. So, this is the situation in Bangladesh. Uh, today's situation that we have today 46 day and new cases today 3,471 3, and new recoveries 502 and new case 15,990 and overall uh, percentage of case is 17.22%. And total death 1.095, and total uh, cases 81,523, total recovery 17,215, and uh, total test 4,073. Uh, 4, uh, and then uh, it is the government, you know, the government situation. Government every day briefing us and we're taking this life from here, but we know that people are treating in home. People are not, you know, announced that because of various regions, they're not going to the hospital because of inadequate hospital treatment. They are not believed in the hospitals. Affected people almost treated themselves at home without informing anybody. Some social problem faces the COVID patient because of, you know, that people have misunderstanding and mis, uh, you know, informed that the COVID uh, dead body can spread the, you know, the viruses. Though I have written an article in a, a newspaper that it is not uh, uh, spread it like this and then they, they are totally a social problem and if anybody affected they don't uh, want to you know uh, 
I tell anybody, inform anybody, even the you know friends or relatives. Five million garments, you know, we have the garment based industry and we have a, the world second position in garments. So we didn't you know close the garment, we only closed for seven days and then we again uh, you know uh, in, uh, invite them to join the uh, these uh, industries and five million garments workers are still working maximum or female without any health care system. It will be I don't know what will be going my lab is um, very near to the garments industries area. I have seen uh, only one day I went to my lab laboratory and then I have seen that what a what uh, uh, you know, mass things happen in garments area in near Dhaka. And Dhaka is the most vulnerable about the COVID-19. This is the scenario and red spot shows that the affected, affected area in Bangladesh, almost all area in Bangladesh is now affected. Some areas is locked down in my hometown. There is a lot now the lockdown. We tell we told government to because uh, to keep the curfew, but I don't know why they they are so hesitant to give the you know, to announce the lockdown. Uh, there is still our all shops, our all shopping center, all all things uh, is open now. Even our bank was open uh, from till you uh, know started the um, COVID, and now everything is open. So it is uh, the people who uh, want to want to work or not to work. I want to spoil among among the unprivileged people about coronavirus. It is uh, very because our uh, you know the poor people. Uh, they don't understand about the coronavirus. No lacking of awareness is there. So we started our this program uh, from the very beginning. From 8th March, I started uh, the distributing the soap, the alcohol-based, alkaline-based soap uh, to the uh, rickshaw pullers and to the, uh, you know, the cleaner cleaner and different types of people uh, we started um, uh, to award the people what which it should be done by the government also. Uh, uh, hand washing we, uh, and use the mask we distributed 10,000 hand washing soap also distribute 10 days food and you know there is a there is a question about uh, in our country that uh, the life or the livelihood, which one is the most important? So we want to say that the life is the most important, but uh, people, some people say that the livelihood is also most important because you know that this is a third world country. We are coming to the, you know, we graduated. We are going to graduate in 2024 as a middle income country. But this Corona. I don't know how to go to there because, but I am very opt optimistic about the, our agriculture um, um, uh, production is very good. In this time, as our agriculture production is very good. So I am always said the government in any meeting that um, we are safe in food. So if I, we are saving food uh, and we can distribute the food properly, so we should uh, we will not be in problem. So please. Uh, uh, lockdown and please stop the opening of all things, but it is not happening. Um, so we 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 are trying to do something every day. As a, I am a social scientist now days, and also the as a responsible citizen of the countries, and I am working last uh, twenty last twenty eight years with the people. So. I'm working in my own ways. So this is some work we have done. The first awareness program, we give the soap to the people. 
on this distribution of soap and the distribution of food and distribute uh, our, our volunteers start working and also you work, uh, distributing food in the remote area also because now the people many people you know um, lost their job and uh, the food that people they don't have open that you know the shops so that is a food crisis but we don't have any food crisis in government level because the distribution is a challenge uh, country, you know Amitushen um, got the Nobel Prize uh, who uh, research on 74, 1974 time in Bangladesh uh, and he shows that the show that the food is there but distribution the the unequal distribution and distribution problem cause the time the famine. So in, now in Bangladesh it is saying that the distribution problem is the most uh, you know, the, uh, important thing. And our challenges, we have to have, uh, uh, you know, we have to have, um, uh, uh, we have to have established a research system. You know, this time, this is the time to establish our research system in molecular level. You know, very hardcore science, which is not, which is totally absent in Bangladesh. We are lagging behind from India. I can say, uh, sixty years or thirty years. Today, I am announcing a very shock to you that our health minister, former health minister, who was the minister from two thousand fourteen to eighteen, dies this morning by COVID nineteen. So he was a son of a great leader, a freedom fighter, a one of the leaders, Captain Mansur Ali, and he died to the uh, coronavirus. He was a health minister. So this is the situation in Bangladesh. I'm very pleased. Uh, in conclusion, we announced uh, our uh, Thursday. Uh, announced, uh, we announced our budget, our plan, our parliament, our finance minister announced the budget, but uh, the budget is not, you know, the allocation is not adequate uh, what we expected to the budget. I can't give the figure because it's not found in the website. And we are, uh, political commitment is very important for our health system in Bangladesh, which is lagging behind. And uh, this time, we, everybody understand that the VIPs and the VIPs and the rich people going out and what happened with the healthcare system in Bangladesh. This is the first time that our VIPs cannot move to the Singapore, Thailand, and USA, and London. And that's why they are now they are affected. Many VIPs already died. Many big, big businessmen already died, you know, with this corona um, virus. And our uh, big businessmen who are called CIT, VIP, they died because uh, um, without proper treatment. Even a big group died. They have no ventilation. But there is a lot of scarcity of ventilation. There are two brothers in the ICU. They have one ventilation, so one by the right and one by the in danger position. The research system should be developed. Uh, research system should be developed, collaborative research. I think collaborative research with India and also the South, South, East, West research system should be developed in Bangladesh. I have seen yesterday, and I, when I was in Boston Institute, I have seen that. India has a lot of collaborative business system with many countries. We have some, but not in the university. We have some, but not sufficient. We have some, you know, local research collaboration with the US, or Sweden, or other countries, but not sufficient. We should go forward. From this lesson, I, I ask 
the people are far from Jesus. So this is the time to you know, 50, we are observing 15 years of our independence. So we should think about it system of so thank you, Papia, and the others who are arranged this uh, seven, uh, this webinar and inviting me to share some of the aspects that I am not asked, uh, you know, presenting the four science of bi biology. You already heard about the four science of bio biology and things, and we have not that type of research on biologists, biology in our country. Even in our highest medical college also not have that type of you know research. So I'm very enriched last uh, three days to um, listen to all these papers. And I'm thankful to the organizers and my friend, Papia. We spent five years together in this institute. Thank you very much. Thank you all the, uh, you know, the, uh, who listened to me uh, last few minutes. And uh, pray for all the people in the world to we can fight, we can combat the disease. And we, I am very much optimistic. We, uh, we definitely, men can do anything. Women can do anything. We, we um, definitely we, we, we will uh, discover or uh, we will find out the vaccine already used in our country. The plasma treatment we started nowadays. So, vaccine will be coming out. Uh, this is my hope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for, for such a nice presentation. But the situation is really horrible there at uh, Bangladesh. But still, your organization is doing a great job to help the people of uh, the Bangladesh there. So, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, but uh, there are some questions from the participants. The first question is that, uh, one is there. So, this is from Dr. Kostov Chakravorty. He has uh, told that, uh, he is residing at Hili, which is uh, almost nearby Indo-Bangladesh border. Yeah. Massive number of trucks are used to travel for daily export-import business after yes. unlock one in India. Now, our government eager to open the border. It can increase the frequency of spreading corona further in both the countries. What do you think? Yes, I, am. I already told that our government doesn't, you know, stop anything even uh, you know the when india government stopped the visa on uh, february they announced they don't give any visa but our government even they don't cancel any flight even at march the the flight from china eastern china flight when china is you know in pandemic position eastern china flight and european flight all are going and border hilly border all other border, Benapal border, all are is open. So it is very dangerous, and it is not only for Bangladesh; it is only for the Indian side also. I think so. I don't know that is what is the political situation, politi political regime of the government, and what is the you know the actual actual you know the concept of perception of the government. I am very much worried. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I am here. Okay, okay. The next question is from Dr. Shaurabh Shikdar. Uh, it's a very alarming situation of Bangladesh. Need immediate assistance for corona treatment. But ma'am, how it is possible to treat the aged people or children to cure in home after affecting with coronaviruses as your country has not a proper treatment set up there? Yes, it is a big... Don't look at me. Don't look at me. It is a big challenge. Uh, uh, children, you know, uh, uh, still now the children is not affected that even lots because of, you know, the, I think uh, that, uh, I don't know, it is not, not a scientific data or not, it is my belief that um, because of, you know, vaccination, the people, are, uh, the children are not affected, but the, you know, the old ages people who died, mostly the old ages, big, big businessmen is dying. And the, some young people are also dying, the, especially the doctors who are dying, who are dying, they are, uh, you know, the um, doctors are young doctors mainly. And some old doctors, our renowned doctors already died. And our minister, he is also old ages, he also died. 
so i don't know the uh, the the, the, the self consciousness and, and the hard immunity can only they can save our country and i don't know the uh, this answer that uh, the, 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 the people are so frustrated uh, about this situation the you know the, uh, the if you see the, our social media they are very much active about these things and our um, uh, our mainstream media uh, you know uh, i don't know the what their role uh, they are reporting but uh, the the reporting is not i th i think the reporting is not the adequate reporting also it is okay. controlled by our government Another question is from Dr. Vishwarupa Ghosh. What is the status of immunity in the rickshaw pullers towards this infection in Bangladesh? That is a good immunity. I am, I, I am asking him, the rickshaw puller. Uh, we have a lot of rickshaw puller, and you know the uh, the, the, the the day labor uh, still they are in good position. Still, I I, I am I am I was the last two days in my laboratory. I, I have some work, uh, you know, the construction work, uh, immediate construction work. So I have seen that they have the, they are, they are in good position. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for uh, the nice presentation. And uh, today the third speaker of Sorry. this. Hello. The data, data was not, you know, the people are hiding. Oh, okay. Themselves. I told earlier that the people are hiding themselves. So uh, the government data was not adequate also. So, but in, in general, I can see that the the, 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 the number of the uh, affected, the poor people is less. Okay. Uh, well, another uh, question from Dr. Supriyo Haldar. As we came to know from electronic media, that Bangladesh has recently claimed that their research on a combination of two drugs, namely Ivermectin, which is anti-parasitic drug, and uh, in along with doxycycline, which is antibiotic, on a group of 60 patients who were all cured within four days. Is it, is it true? Ah uh, yes, it is. Beximco group has started on, on uh, two drugs. Uh, it is in uh, BBC. I have seen the news, but uh, where it is. I don't see, we see that, that, that. that uh, who are recovered from the COVID-19, they've taken the plasma, and this is a good um, system. Okay. Bangladesh is still good. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot for uh, actually accepting our uh, invitation to become a resource person for this uh, international webinar series. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to my friend Papia also, and thank you to, to the listener. And uh, after Corona, I am inviting all of you to Bangladesh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dosi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Papia. Okay. 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 The last speaker for today evening is Dr. Shaptorshi Chatterji. He is going to deliver a talk on the topic COVID-19. Concern, challenges, and intervention. So, Dr. Chatterjee is currently associated as an assistant professor of department Department of Microbiology, School of Life Science and Biotechnology, Adamas University, Calcutta. After completing his PhD in microbiology from University of Kollani in 2014, he was engaged as postdoctoral fellow in Iser, Kolkata, for two years. Then he joined Sri MNN Virani Science College Rajkot as an assistant professor before joining to his current affiliation. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chatterjee was featured in Who's Who in the World 2016 by Marquis Who's Who publication. He has 14 research publications in international peer-reviewed journal and three books published. So I'm requesting Dr. Chatterjee to deliver his talk. Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to be uh, the final speaker of the international seminar, considering the fact that I am now speaking to people who are not only informed about COVID-19, but also gained a little bit of expertise. So uh, I would move to the presentation.
So the topic for my presentation is COVID-19 concern, challenges, and intervention. Uh, let us start with the emergence of COVID-19. Uh, if we trace back the event of first occurrence of COVID-19, we will see it occurred in a seafood and animal market in the Yuhan district of China in the end of 2019. Now, it was a spillover event that the seen uh, in 2003, the occurrence of SARS, that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, uh, which has probable origin as civet cat, and also seen MERS, that is Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, in 2012 in UAE, and the probable source was camel. So my uh, idea of this presentation as the final speaker would be to go beyond convention and whenever we are speaking about any disease for that matter, we always speak about the occurrence, diagnosis, treatment, symptoms, pathogenesis, virulence, and prevention. But we miss some very vital components of a disease management, that is society, intervention, media, individual role. So COVID-19 has taught us how we can involve or integrate the society the non-pharmaceutical intervention, the involvement of media and individual role in the case of disease management. So my presentation for the day would, is aimed for people who have already gone a lot of expertise through the scientific sessions, getting a lot of information regarding COVID-19. So now coming to the, uh, my presentation, I would be giving you a food for thought. Let us stimulate our gray matter over all the information that we have gathered till death and let us think about why, how, and what, how, what, and how. So first we'll move to the epidemiological status of the world in terms of COVID-19. Now for us, the epidemiological status should not mean just our data. As we can see that the coronavirus has affected more than 75 lakh people all over the globe and already has taken the life of 4 lakh people. So eventually we may see that this is a very, very small or insignificant population of the world that has died out of this population. But we need to remember that out of the 4 lakh closed cases, there is 10% death that has occurred. So out of the 42 lakh cases that has been closed till now, 38 lakh people have recovered. That is a good situation. On the other hand, we also need to anticipate that 10% of the closed cases ended up in death. It is also true that presently 53,000 and that is approximately 2% of the entire population who are affected of COVID-19 is in the condition of critical nature. So that is another important status we need to analyze out of the epidemiological aspect. Coming to the Indian scenario of uh, COVID-19, it is very uh, important for us to uh, understand the data, not as a whole, but break up and try to find out how and why. Now, India has tested around 49 lakh samples till death, and among which 2,66,000 has been affected. Considering the huge population of India, which is around 130 crore odd population, the 2,66,000 uh, uh, positive case may not sound a big deal, but we need to understand that the percentage of tested positive population is 5.42 percentage. That means if the entire population is tested and if the same uh, trend is followed, we may have to end up with seven crore case of COVID-19. That is a very, very severe alarm. So we need to critically analyze the epidemiology data, which is the key in understanding pandemic and at least in the present situation. 
while analyzing the data, we have taken three different countries uh, uh, presently, which are all above India in the ranking of COVID-19. USA, which ranks first in COVID-19, has uh, a population of 0.6% that has been tested positive. And 0.035% of the population has already succumbed, that is died. But interestingly, we can see that infected to tested is around 9%, which is severely higher than other country if we compare it with Russia, which is actually just half of the population in terms of infection. Now, if we come to India, we will see that a mere 0 0.006, that is 0 0.0006% of the population has presently been infected. Now, the infected to uh, treated ratio or percentage is around 5.7, but what is alarming is the death to infected ratio, which is still around 2.8, that is almost average to the global scenario. But one of the most alarming situation you can see, if we look at the bottom part of the curve, that you can see that four to five different states are actually contributing to more of case fatality rate that is referred to as CFR rather than the all other states. And the red line marked here represents the national rate. So we can conclude that India has significantly conducted less tests that you can see here. All these data are reflected from that 0.37% of the population has been tested till death in compared to US, which has already tested around 7% of the population, and Russia that has almost tested 10% of the population. Therefore, India has a very high positive to test ratio and a high death rate to be considered. The next question that I would ask is, have we conducted enough tests? If we rank the countries in terms of infection, US ranks number one and India moved to fourth position. And we see that test per million is just 3,780 in compared to 69,000 of USA or even 95,000 of Russia. Therefore, from this graph or from this table, it can be well anticipated that the developing countries or economically stronger countries have conducted more tests than lower middle and low income countries. And India has conducted 15 times less tests than Germany, 20 times less tests than USA, and 30 times less tests than Russia. Therefore, India's infection per million, which is a very less, that is 216 in compared to all other countries that you can see in the table, is a big questionable fact. So we require rapid test method, we require mass screening, and the requirement of epidemiological studies is very, very much important at this junction. I will move to the next uh, part of the presentation where it is anticipated by various people that are economically weaker countries safer than the uh, developed countries. Because we can see the topmost countries affected with COVID-19 are mostly the higher countries in terms of economy or the developed countries. But the answer is absolutely no because low-income countries are more immune to COVID-19 is a complete misconception. If we plot the GDP, that is the gross domestic product in terms of population, and also see the case fatality rate or even the infection, we can come to the idea that definitely the weaker countries are at risk in the similar way as in case of developed countries. So we should not be overconfident and satisfied saying that the lower income countries are less chance of getting COVID-19. In case I want to emphasize with responsibility that the bigger countries, the developed countries are certainly better in healthcare system. Therefore, if a low income countries reach to that extent, what has been reached by a developed countries in terms of number of COVID cases, those countries 
are going to suffer like anything. So we need to be aware of these data. But there has been a lot of juggling with statistics, which I want to mention. Whether it is the government, they are showing a statistics, whether it's the opposition, they are showing a different statistics, and whether it's the media, which is showing a different statistics. Now, this juggling of statistics should be immediately stopped because they do not contribute in the positive critical appreciation of the case of COVID-19. The three most used parameters in this context are case fatality rate, which is known as CFR, the doubling time of infection and the growth of infection. Here in the slide, I have shown three different cases. The first one represents the case fatality rate. So if you just have a view of this case fatality rate, you will be confident that, okay, we have almost controlled the case fatality rate. That means we have almost uh, prevented the increase of CFR in terms of global scenario. Now, if we go to the next slide, adjacent to it, in the next uh, graph, we'll see that different phase of lockdown has increased the doubling time of infection. Now, it is important for us to understand the definition of doubling time in this relation. The definition of doubling time when analyzed shows that that is the time taken to double the number. So it's not the absolute value. So if it is 100 to 200, that is the doubling time. And same doubling time can be 1 lakh to 2 lakh. So it can be well assumed that the doubling time has increased will give us a sense of false security because we'll feel that, okay, the doubling time is increasing. That means the spread has come down. But if we come to another representation at the bottom of my slide, we'll see that it took almost 110 days to reach 100, K, uh, sorry, 1 lakh case in India, but it took 15 days to reach the next 1 lakh. So the next 50,000 order during the time of lockdown has been achieved within 12 days, 8 days, and 7 days. So this is a representation of epidemiological data and we being our people from the background of science need not be confused with the jugglery of the statistics data by whoever presented to us. We should be able to anticipate the correct data and analyze them irrespective it is being said by the government, by any of the opposition or by the media. So I emphasize that we need to have a clear understanding before making comment because the entire world, our family members, our friends, our students are looking at us for the data and we should not give them raw data without proper interpretation. There has been always a issue saying the flattening of the curve and raising the bar. So we have to understand the concept of flattening the curve and raising the bar. Now it has been well anticipated that this, uh, if we look at the left-hand side uh, graph, the area covered, the area covered by the dark green patch as well as the light green patch represents the number of case and which is equal. So what is the difference between the dark green and the light green patch? The only difference is the time frame. The dark green patch, let me consider it as 1,000 cases occurred within one month, and the light green patch represents uh, 1,000 cases, but not within one month, within a span of three months. Uh, so, uh, if we look at the topmost graph that is flattening the curve, what we mean is to curb down the number of case in respect to time. That means if until we have a vaccine, we cannot, we need to understand, we cannot cut down the number of cases. So if we anticipate that there will be one lakh case or even one crore case globally, our attempt would be to make that case not within a span of two months or three months, but to span it over a period of an year. 
and by the time by the year time that we get we need to increase the capacity of healthcare so you must be listening to government you must be listening to various international media which is actually focusing on the flattening of the curve but please question yourself how much uh, effort has been put to increase the healthcare capacity because until we raise the bar only flattening the curve is not going to provide a solution to us so we need to understand that healthcare facility need to improve and that does not mean providing 100 or 1000 of extra bed that requires a throughout improvisation in case of healthcare sector dr chatterjee sorry yeah. to interrupt you can you uh, full screen your slide presentation can you yeah. go full screen mode is it fine yes it is fine thank you yeah. wow uh, so uh, from this we understand that the healthcare system requires a revisit now unfortunately while raising the bar what we have done globally it's not about india or any countries globally what we have done is the healthcare workers succumbed we have lost huge amount of healthcare workers because by saying the term healthcare worker we definitely do not mean only the doctors or nurses or technician it includes housekeeper cleaner the laundry personnel ambulance driver kitchen staff and also the pharmacist so question yourself in the last two and a half or three months have you seen a dri uh, ambulance driver wearing a pp mask the answer would be mostly no and as a result this table may not be visible to you because i have just taken 10 examples but there are thousands of examples where countries like usa italy spain turkey india brazil china has reported the death of healthcare workers and the numbers are 17000 35000 600 14000 3000 to 23000 and many more that means we have lost huge amount of healthcare workers in the fight to battle covid 19 so definitely this is not how we try to raise the bar instead of raising the bar the world has lowered the bar by losing healthcare workers which is definitely a very important criteria we need to think upon coming to one of the very conventional and controversial uh, aspect of covid 19 that is the role of animals now till that uh, there has been a uh, report of bat as the origin of covid 19 as 96 percent identity was seen for sars cov 2 uh, with the known uh, with the uh, closest relative uh, that is horseshoe bat now there has been controversies regarding that there has been questions on pangolin being an intermediate host so on the left side of the screen you can see that the reservoir host and intermediate host still remains a question mark where the human to human transmission is evident now the question is how can we avoid animal now many of us know that china uh, is a very big consumer of wildlife wildlife animals as food so we use animal we eat animal we play animal we see animal and we have animal so is it really possible to be apart from animal because ultimately human being are also part of mammals being considered in the animal kingdom so what we require is a severe intervention and periodic monitoring and regulation as well as ecological sustenance now many times i come across question that here there is a very big problem of snake and i often refer to the problem is not of snake the problem is on us because we have encoached his land so similarly we can say that periodic monitoring and regulation of bush meat market now this bush meat market is a term that is used mostly for raw meat selling market throughout the globe 
Now, various countries, including India, Bangladesh, USA, China, uh, Middle East countries, Africa, have uh, or consume a lot of meat which are unprocessed. So the animals are reared in a place, the same place the animals are butchered, and the same place the animals are uh, packed and sold to the customer. Since we do not have a proper different of these phase, what happens if an animal falls ill, that directly it can transmit to human, increasing the potential. It is also known that during the time of uh, bird flu, the price of chicken comes down. And what happens instead of avoiding chicken as a food material at that time, we see long queue in front of chicken shop, which is definitely a concern. Therefore, Periodic monitoring and regulation of the health of animals, especially the animals which are capable or reservoirs, are very much important. But till that, no country in the world is having a monitoring of health of animals which are sold for food, apart from the FASI and food regulatory system, which only deals with the hygienic aspect of food selling. I'd like to uh, have a discussion on Drac Bram Stoker's Dracula because we all are aware of the Bram Stoker's Dracula that transform into a bat, which is a dreadful meat. But if we consider the theology and bat, there is a serious concern. As we know that most of the bat are fruitivores, they uh, do not drink mammalian blood, but there are certainly several uh, species of blood, uh, bat which feed on blood. But when the bat harbors a diverse virus and a high zoonotic viruses, which is a severe threat to public health, therefore consumption of bat as a food must be avoided. Now, the highest number of viruses found to be hosted per bat species among the mammalian order. Uh, another interesting fact could be traced if we study the physiology or immunology of bat. And based on the present knowledge that we have, we can say that the bat maintain a high viral diversity while a very low virulence. That means these viruses use bat as a reservoir, but the bat do not fall ill. And while tracing the reason why the bat do not fall ill, it was seen that the bat substantially increased the rate of metabolism to 10, 15 to 17 fold during their flight compared to a resting stage. And they also have a very high level of virus induced pro inflammatory response, which prevent the bat to fall ill of the virus while the bat continuously keep on carrying those viruses which are having zoonotic potential. Now WHO, the World Health Organization, has given a eight pillar of country level preparedness way back in the January. Now if through just the heading of the preparedness, you will find that most of the preparedness has been lacking in countries including the developed ones. The first one was country level coordination, which was well managed by most of the countries. The risk communication to the community engagement was also a bit of okay. Surveillance and rapid response team was formed by most of the state government and monitored by the central government. But next is the point of entry. Now, most of the countries did not stop the point of entry, which was international travel, until they were forced to do so. So if we see that in January, if we would have stopped the entry of international flight and mobility, then India could have shown the world a better way of responding to COVID-19. The national laboratories has been performing to the best of their potential in uh, going for diagnostic tests and other uh, measures. Infection prevention and control has been widely uh, evaluated and most of the state government, most of the municipality, panchayat and uh, small institutes are trying their best 
again the case management has been good but the last pillar that is operational support and logistic has been another failure now today we know that the government has to repeatedly ask people not to wear n95 mask you know the reason behind it because if every person starts wearing n95 mask what will happen the healthcare sector will not have enough mask to wear many of the doctors are provided with pp at least now but still there are huge amount of uh, group d workers healthcare support staff who are denied of ppe so operational support and logistic has been a complete failure in various countries and india has been no exception so i have marked with red these two failure in the pillar has resulted in the increase of covid case in india now there is a fallacy the standing of health security index 2019 if you see us stands one in terms of health security so if you stand first in health security it is well assumed that you will stand last in covid 19 but unfortunately us also ranks number one in covid 19 united kingdom ranks second in terms of health security whereas it is fifth in terms of covid 19 while india which is ranked 57th has managed fourth position which is not at all good so we can say that this standing of health security indexes are mere jugglery of things of the developing countries do not believe in this ranking and i think we have something to get for the students also while we are always busy in ranking first it is always not good that first rank will uh, determine that you have the most knowledge so that's the take home message from this standing that despite of standing best in terms of health security us is the worst affected country in terms of covid 19 so this graph says how the population of is uh, of various countries are distributed and how they are ranked in terms of health security but there is a straight cut fallacy this does not reflect the truth in terms of health preparedness in terms of intervention of covid 19 there are two major role of intervention the first one being non pharmaceutical and the second one being medical now uh, i will speak a little bit about the physical distancing and lockdown that includes the non pharmaceutical intervention that actually is more effective than the medical intervention we have no shame in saying that science had failed to a great extent in preventing covid 19 till that but society has given a very strong backup with the help of lockdown with the help of physical distancing to prevent the spread of covid-19 in terms of medical intervention the preventive intervention uh, we all know that there is presently no medicine available and vaccine is also not seen in the very near future in terms of therapy there is novel therapy is also not much available but whatever is done being done in terms of medical intervention is drug repurposing so i'll come to the first aspect that is preventive medical intervention against covid 19 now i have intentionally put a, a picture directly copied from the uh, government order because you all are aware that hydroxychloroquine a drug which is used for ma against malaria have been said that it is effective against covid 19 now what the media what the news what our peer ally say that okay the government of india the icmr indian council of medical research has approved the use of hydroxychloroquine against covid 19 but what they do not say is the portion that i have underlined with red this information will not pass on to you until you tra track the source of the information which says that hydroxychloroquine is for empiric use it is for selected individual and there is exclusion and next it is only to be prescribed on by a registered medical practitioner and not an over the counter drug 
So we need to understand that there is lack of information about hydroxychloroquine in terms of clinical evidences and clinical research. Now recently there has been a controversy that there was a paper saying hydroxychloroquine, uh, which is a molecule people are thinking as a hope, do not actually help in COVID-19, instead increase the mortality. So that paper was retracted somehow, but we need to be understanding the fact that this hydroxychloroquine should not give or instill a sense of false security. So wherever people will ask on hydroxychloroquine, please tell them this is not going to give them a 100% foolproof prevention and this is not at all a complete preventive medicine. This has been given permission by ICMR on an empiric use and should not give or instill a sense of that oxychloroquine and that means I am safe. And there is an eligibility criteria of asymptomatic healthcare workers as well as asymptomatic contact with confirmed case and not all individual should try to have this medicine as an over-the-counter drug or with any purpose. So this is very, very important in terms of understanding the preventive medication of COVID-19. Coming to the treatment of COVID-19, we need to understand that US FDA has not approved any drug till that to treat COVID-19. Several drugs like baricitinib, saritinib, hydroxychloroquine, oxytocin, uh, tocizumab, convalescent plasma therapy, remdesivir and flavivir are just in clinical trial. But we need to mention that remdesivir is a drug which has received the emergency use authorization for the potential COVID-19 treatment. Now, again, we need to understand that this use of remdesivir is not by, uh, for people who are at their home or treated at home. It is only under a medical practitioner and under treatment at hospitals. So novel antiviral discovery is time consuming and expensive. So people are mostly relying on drug repurposing. And we all know that drug repurposing is often serendipitous. That is, it is our luck to get a drug. And we hope that some of the drug would be effective against COVID-19 in the very near future. And we will have a definite treatment instead of empiric treatment. So remdesivir is presently a molecule of hope which is a prodrug, a nucleotide analog that gets converted into a triphosphate group. And the mechanism is also a postulated mechanism that says that it interferes with the viral RNA and it actually stops the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase from RNA replication or RNA synthesis in a very complex form with RNA-dependent RNA polymerase the triphosphate form of remdesivir as well as ATP molecules being combined. So this is also a postulated or proposed mechanism of remdesivir, which is presently considered as a molecule of hope. There has been a lot of work on AI, that is artificial intelligence, that has come up, machine learning, which has come up in thermal screening and detection, clinical research, data validation, prediction and monitoring, as well as e-resources. Because this AI and uh, AI has helped the involvement of technology in tackling COVID-19. Now the next question is, can we gamble over people's life? Now India has already expanded use on controversial drug for coronavirus death despite safety concern. This has came in Nature News. Should scientists infect healthy people with coronavirus to test, test vaccines? So these are ethical issues that we need to address because humanity is presently under challenge. Now, is it ethical to try to develop vaccine by injecting coronavirus to people who are not infected where we do not have uh, medication for that. 
is it is the consent of participant enough because if you ask for a consent to a dying participant who do not have any medication he would definitely give consent to allow the medicine but the medicine effect can even lead to the death of the participant many of the clinical trials is using a payment mode where a payment or a insurance is given to a participant but we need to have a thought that lower middle income countries have more risk because there the healthcare expenditure is more and the amount of money need to sold need to sell out by a pharmaceutical company to conduct clinical research is certainly less so we have to think that can we Now, a word that has been widely spread is called social distancing, uh, to which I have a very serious objection because I would rather say it to be physical distancing and not social, especially in context to the present generation who are always socially connected with WhatsApp, Facebook, and various technological intervention. The only people who are a bit socially disconnected are the older people who are more convenient in meeting people going to the market going to the bank and speaking with people rather than spending time on social media therefore we need to emphasize we need to instinct that we are not socially apart we need to be socially together more than any time before and we need to extend a physical distancing and definitely not social especially considering the present generation of technology now coming to the information now the information of covid is known to each and every member of the society right from the maid who works in my home to the scientist in an icmr institute everyone has information about covid 19 now how authentic are this information most of the time we get this information from social media which is to socialize but definitely do not rely on this for scientific information my request for my fellow peer members and students that please validate the information from who from ministry of family and health welfare from uh, cdc central for disease control in understanding the data there has been a list of more than 70 medicine which are fraudulent so please stop socializing wrong information with the help of social media use social media to socialize but not to rely on scientific information and that's why uh, in the harvard gadget recently it is said that battling the pandemic of misinformation has been a challenge for public health official which is making the situation harder Coming to the fag end of my presentation, let me emphasize that when someone asks us, what can we do? Let us convert it, what we can do. In emphasizing what and in emphasizing can, let us say, let us maintain physical distancing, let us help the underprivileged, let us spread awareness, let us develop critical thinking because whatever i have said the information is available to you so can you have a critical thinking understanding of the situation individually stay healthy continue working believe in science and the last circle i have kept empty because that is where you have to put a question mark you have to ask yourself what you can do so that you can prevent covid 19 and the last message would be be compassionate to elders they are at risk they require every uh, help from us and kindly understand the child who cannot go to play who cannot go to school so understand them do not uh, get angry with elders and child and convert what we can do do not question yourself rather than make a situation that you can contribute to the uh, treatment of COVID-19 as biologist, as, as an individual, as a citizen of the country. I would like to thank the organizers, uh, especially Professor Papiya Chakraborty, the principal, and Dr. Shorab Shikdar for giving me this opportunity to speak before you and uh, with the little bit of knowledge that I have. But what I emphasize is analyze the 
uh, information. Do not just spread information. Try to put yourself in a situation and see what can be a part of you that you can do for the nation, for the world in tackling COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee, for uh, such a nice and explicit uh, presentation. And you have raised some issues which could be actually done in a better way to combat this situation. In a better way, actually. In which situation we are currently, uh, uh, actually, in the present situation, we, can could, we could do something better uh, with those issues which actually you have raised in your slides or presentation. So you have some questions, sir. The first question is that uh, previously it was said the aged people were more susceptible to COVID-19. Is it still applicable? This question is yeah. from Moindrila Ganguly. Okay. So, uh, why uh, the aged people are at risk factor? It is not only because that COVID-19 has a special receptor for aged people. It's not about the virus. It's about the comorbidity. Now, if you look at the population, the gerontological population above 60, you will find India has a very high amount of people who are having uh, diabetes, who are having hypertension. And therefore, a person who is having diabetes, who is having the hypertension, he, once he is uh, infected with COVID-19, the chances of recovery gets worsened. So it's not that he will not recover. A person with good immune system is bound to recover from COVID-19. But those things, those uh, comorbidity factors are difficult for them to adjust. And we also need to mention that if a person of a younger age is affected by COVID-19, he can stay at home and get treated. But when it is in case of a aged people, he requires a hospitalization. And in case he is in ventilation, that recovery from ventilation, once the support of oxygen, once the mechanical support is provided, then that recovery becomes difficult. Therefore, uh, older population is still at risk, especially considering the low level of mixability we are having in our country. The second question is from uh, Mr. Shuprati Mollik. Is interferon alpha to be an effective treatment? Should we be encouraging our medical community to obtain this? Yeah. Uh, uh, IL uh, interferon uh, is also a very, very potential uh, treatment option. But uh, to be very specific, uh, I have recently uh, gone through all the clinical trials that has been conducted on COVID-19. So based on my little expertise on the clinical level, I'm saying that none of these have gone to clinical level three phase. So it is absolutely premature to say, yes, the in vitro and in vivo data are encouraging, but until we reach the clinical stage three end or four, it is absolutely uh, immature to say that uh, that will be a good treatment option, but definitely it can be a potential candidate for treatment. Okay. Next question is from... Uh, hello. I have one question. You can write there. I'm from Bangladesh, Dr. Fulbis. Okay, ma'am, ask please the question. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for your excellent presentation, Shakti. I have one question that the, 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 you say that the aged people is very vulnerable who have the diabetes and hypertension. And I'm wondering uh, to see in our country that uh, uh, the poor people, mass people who are living in slums and around people ask me that they are not much affected, you know, even in their old age or children are running around the you know, street and they are not so much affected. So, so I, I know this uh, Bangladesh, where, where is Bangladesh going? WHO already predicted that Bangladesh may lost 20 lakhs people, you know, uh, maybe uh, died. But uh, till today, the government uh, we, and that uh, that percentage is very less uh, regarding our, you know, the system, healthcare system. But it is a surprising me that the, the immunity based, uh, immunity in the slums area 
is really questionable uh, for me, and uh, I don't understand. It is going there. Can I, can I, can I understand my question? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, as far as I could hear that uh, you were speaking about the people in the, especially the aged people in the slum area, that uh, they and are children, not getting children, children, children in the slum, yeah. slum area. Yeah. In Bangladesh, the, and the, the, the people who died, more or less, you know, the 40 to 50, yeah. more or less people. See, uh, to answer this question, the first thing we need to emphasize is we should not instinct a, a ray of hope which is not supported by science as of now. Because uh, there are certain pockets of uh, age group, certain blood, even uh, recently there is a report that some of the blood group has been uh, found to be more prone. But it is like, uh, uh, though there is evidences coming up, but I would still suggest that we should not instinct us false security at this moment. Because uh, if we consider that why people of the age group 40 to 50 are more dying of COVID-19, if we see that who is going out from our house every day, it is not the child who is 10 years old. It is, we are not allowing our parents who is 60 years or older to go out. Instead, who are going out? We, who is in the, in the age group of 30 to 50 or 30 to 40, are taking most of the responsibilities in going out. So that can be one of the reasons that why that population is getting more affected. And we also know that our young population are more adamant in uh, not using a mask or uh, not having a protection compared to the younger where you can have a uh, uh, pressurize them or a older population now in case of herd immunity it is absolutely uh, clear to say that till now herd immunity cannot grow so fast that within two and a half to three months of the first occurrence that we will have a population which has been protected by herd immunity. So maybe we are fortunate that those people are not getting infected, but it's premature to say that these people are immune to the disease. But let us uh, pray so that they do not fall ill because when more people will fall ill, it will not only create a problem for them, it will create a problem for the entire country because the entire healthcare system will collapse if the number of cases increase day by day. So it's our fortunate, uh, in the, we are fortunate in this regard that some cluster of people are not falling ill, but still we need to have the safety precautions ready for them instead of instincting a false ray of hope. Thank you very much. And Papi, can you have the picture? Then I, I want to leave. Yeah. Uh, okay, you put your video on. Uh, you put your video on. Your video is uh, not on. I don't know. It is on. You put your video I cannot. On. I cannot. You have to. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay yeah. Um, uh, shall I give the? Uh, are you are you all taking questions now? More? Yeah. Okay. 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 okay thank you, Firdosi, for joining us in this webinar. I sincerely thank you for your presentation and your situation in Bangladesh, reporting the situation. And uh, in the end, I'll uh, thank all. So since you are leaving uh, early, so my special thanks to you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so honored that you included me, though I am not a you know virologist or not. No, we needed to know the situation worldwide. Okay, so being oh, a third world country people. members and a neighboring country, we needed I, to. I love uh, to have the. I love to have his, uh, you know, some slides. I will write to you this. Yes, it's it's on on Facebook Live today. Okay. We need to have picture yeah 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 okay i'll send you the pictures thank already you. taken yeah i'll send you i'll send you the picture has been taken the photo yeah. session is okay four people four people pictures take taken already yeah 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 okay thank you I, so goodbye i am leaving because i have to pray okay, okay goodbye, goodbye. Time is now. Okay. yeah yeah you have to pray namaz okay thank you
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so we had a, we had been going for a very wonderful session. I would now request our principal, ma'am, Dr. Papia Chakraborty, uh, to say a few words uh, about this today's session. Actually, today we had an excellent session and excellent overview of all perspectives. The last three days we were uh, from all over the world. We uh, started from the biotechnological aspects of research, epidemiological studies, structural biology experts with computer simulation, as well as the healthcare security system in different countries worldwide. So, though we are in a lockdown situation, it has helped us to gather more knowledge. We are uh, not socially distant, we are physically distant. So we are now more knowledgeable. And uh, I think uh, we should, as uh, Shoptorshi has said very rightly, that we should develop critical thinking, uh, thinking and believe in science. Not spread rumors and not spread uh, other aspects of this, like the media and all. So we should, uh, as scientists or as uh, our, uh, we are all responsible citizens, we are in the, this field of uh, research and uh, in this field of education, as higher education people, we should be responsible enough to spread the awareness among the public. What we have gathered from this all three days, the international webinar. So. I'm really happy that we could gather all these speakers at a single platform and uh, our college uh, organizers have really done a very uh, sincere effort and cooperative effort, which is uh, praiseworthy to run this webinar with uh, full concentration and uh, to spend their time and also to spread the awareness in the media. So I thank you all. I thank the speakers for today, for all your enlightening speeches. And uh, I, I'm thankful to all and welcome you all back again. We'll see you all back again. Uh, I don't know in which situation, I, either physically or socially, I don't know which situation we'll be back again. If we can travel, then we will travel and see each other or else we'll be uh, seen in this platform again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for the wonderful summing up. Uh, I would like uh, as today uh, we come actually come to the end of the three days long webinar, which I hope was interesting uh, to you. I would like to thank everybody. I would like to thank everybody involved in this. First of all, I would like to thank and speakers who have taken time out from their busy schedule and uh, different time zones and different countries to speak to this audience and interact with them. Also, of course, uh, I would like to thank the participants uh, uh, for their patient and enthusiastic in their response. Even though we did have some technical glitches, uh, they were very patient and very supportive and would like to thank them again for their patience and interactions. Uh, and of course, such a big event cannot uh, be done without the active support of our administration. For that, I would like to specially thank our uh, principal man, Dr. Papia Chakraborty, for all the support she gave us and the inspiration behind this webinar. Last but not the least, this would not have been possible without the untiring and incessant efforts of all the people, uh, my colleagues, and my wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, organizing committee team members who ran all the while uh, things behind the scene, their hard work and dedication made the whole thing a grand success. So I sincerely thank all of them from the bottom of my heart for making this uh, a grand success. Thank you once again, and we hope with your support and participation, we can hold such webinars in future. Uh, I would now request uh, my team members, the organi organizing team members, to put on uh, their videos so that all participants. Uh, 
hello sir uh, only the organizing team members organizing team members please put on your yes thank you i think we all are here uh and the punctuous joining yes he is also in so we take a screenshot of this and i would like to introduce each and every one of them we have from department please hello participants please put up your video hello participants please put up your video ma'am yeah ma'am uh, only the organizing team members and the speakers yeah participants please put up your video participants please switch off your videos we'll be taking a snap first of all the organizing team members and then we'll ask you to switch it on kindly switch off your yes only the only the organizing members right okay we have uh, uh, the three departments we are participating uh in the whole of this webinar in organizing this webinar it was department of botany uh, department of uh, zoology department of uh, um, molecular biology and iss uh, so i thank each and all of the parties uh, all of the departmental members for putting up such a great effort and making this a grand success and uh, so we take a snap of this organizing team Uh, as you can see on their screen, their names. Uh, we have Dr. Shungita Gonga Padhai. Uh, she is from Botany Department. Uh, we have hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, please put off your put off your uh, microphone. Uh, yes. Uh, Dr. Shapun Mondol. Uh, he is also from uh, Department of Botany. Uh, we have Dr. Shorov Shikdar. He is from Department of Zoology. Dr. Vishrupa Ghosh uh, from Department of Botany. Uh, yes dr shundipan gupta ias uh, he was uh, actually moderating the question answer session uh, thank you shundipan and we have uh, dr modhumita roy uh, she was a co host also uh, for the entire webinar and she is from the department of botany we have dr uh, nilakshi sharkar uh, she is from department of zoology dr priyanko dhar uh, he is from department of botany and dr debusri goldal uh she is from uh, she is hod and she is from department of botany our very young zoology shujismita pardon shujismita department of zoology yeah that's what i said department of zoology i said uh, uh anyway maybe uh, i was heard wrong uh, and we have dr dipankshu vishwas he is from department of uh, botany and uh, did i miss anyone else uh, hello uh shundipan and uh, i think dinesh. Two men, uh, dr dinesh haldar dinesh haldar uh, he is from department of botany but i can't find them here right now uh that's uh, only not here there's only one of them yeah he he must have he must have logged out due to uh, i mean poor network connectivity and uh, so uh, this was our team uh, you can see a young and very vibrant team which have been putting up uh, tirelessly and working hard throughout the time uh, and i think we were actually trying call, to host this uh, webinar excuse uh, me excuse me shuchishmita kalpataru haldar from molecular biology right uh, dr kalpataru haldar from molecular biology uh, i forgot to mention his name i'm extremely sorry and uh, i think you can see they are such a vibrant and young group of people who were so active and so supportive for, for the entire uh, webinar period we had been working for very long time i think we were trying to host this before um fun but suddenly that um fun came through and we had to postpone this program but finally all ended well and i thank all uh, of you again from bottom of my heart for making this a grand uh, success i now request all the participants because without their effort this webinar would not have been uh, possible and to switch on their videos and we take a snap of them also participants please put on your web yes can we wait for some more time 
Yes. Very nice. And we have this student group also very interactive. I think, uh, All right, I'll uh, give me a few minutes. Uh, a few minutes, will I'll be taking snap because I have to roll over and take the snap. Uh, okay, uh, say cheese, and here we go. So this is first one. Yes. Uh, okay, here we have a few more people. Yes. Dinesh Haldar is okay. And uh, Dinesh, please put on your uh, yes, uh, Dr. Tridip Chakraborty, Rotindranath. Yes, I'll I'll just put on their videos also. We can, of course, take few min few more minutes. Yes, uh, show me, Lee. Yes, please put on your uh, videos, uh, Sanjana Chakraborty. Okay, Dr. Shunil Khan, Bishwajit Mondal, Arun Kumar, Atunu Nando, please put on your videos. Papia Chakraborty. Okay, uh, Arun Kumar. Okay, Papia Chakraborty. Okay, uh, I'll take the snap now. Yes, I'll move on to the next screen. Shantanu is not put on the video. Um, I'll ask him again. Uh, Unkita, uh, Manna, Atunu Nando, Ashish Borua, Shantanu Devnath, Shantanu, could you please put on your video? Uh, yes. Madam, please put, put my video on. All right, all right. I, 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 I have enabled you. I have enabled you. Please, so, please. Omarlo and Shantanu. Madam, it's me, Shupriya Haldar. Please put. My yes, video on. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm doing that for everyone. Uh, uh, please wait for some time. Dr. Ivy Kundu, please put on your uh, video. Yes. Okay, uh, this is taking a, a bit time, but then it's worthwhile. So we were full all the time, and I know I had been uh, receiving WhatsApp and phone calls all the time from the participants because they wanted to join this. And we were not able to take them in because of the limitation of 100 people. Madam? Yes. It's me, Shupri Haldar. Please put my video yeah, on. Yeah, I'm trying out. I'm doing it one by one. Okay, okay. okay. Because I haven't, uh, I still not, I haven't seen uh, your name is not right now. Start. It'll take. Okay. Because there's no single key to do so, so I have to be doing it. Madam, I'm trying, but yeah, I, I, uh, I think you I, it, must be it must be activated from my end, right? Uh, I'm trying it though, uh, because your name hasn't figured out uh, right now. Okay, uh, Oops. Uh, okay, I'll go to the next screen then. Not finding your name. Uh, Shupriyo Haldar. Yeah, Shupriyo yes. Haldar. I, I can't find your name uh, on my screen actually. That's why I'm trying. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, all right. Uh, I'll first take a screenshot of this, and then I'll get, go back to the previous menu, and then I'll try to put your put your videos on. Okay. Hello, madam. I am still here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Shukriyo. Shukriyo Halda. Yeah, right. Yes, I found you. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Anyone? Okay, we take the final uh, uh, shot. So say cheese again, and here we go. Yeah. Thank you all once again. Uh, so, is there uh, we end the meeting here today, and we hope we'll get back uh, we'll get back your support and again participation if we organize such webinars in future. Thank you again, and good night to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you all. all.